Hi. Uh, we're going to have a discussion about uh, something that actually happens very, very often for an electrician doing commercial installations. Now, uh, we know that the code book, uh, Canadian Electrical Code, is the one that I'm referencing here, but probably the same everywhere else. Uh, it tells us that basically an ungrounded conductor needs overcurrent protection at the point where it receives its current from, right? And if I ever want to reduce the conductor size, I need to protect that new conductor, right? Our overcurrent device is there to protect the ungrounded conductors. So what we often run into as electricians is a situation like this, where we may have, you know, a main service coming in or a main distribution panel, main disconnect feeding a bunch of other stuff. Uh, could be bays in a commercial environment, could be a apartment service as well, right? For a multifamily residential. So here we have this main service coming in, right? And it could be a, a pretty big main service. Um, we'll make up some numbers in a couple minutes and we'll do some calculations as well. Right, that main service is then going to feed off into a splitter. Inside the splitter, you know, there's a bunch of lugs. We bring the main service in, right, and then we might be feeding a bunch of loads off of that splitter. Now, typically, we'll come out of the splitter and do a fuse disconnect, maybe a meter base, and then go out and feed whatever our load is. Now, the problem is, is that if this is, you know, a 500 amp or a 400 amp main service, and this is only a 60 amp load, if I want to run that giant conductor, that's not going to fit inside my uh, control device here and that's not going to fit inside my load or inside my panel. So there is applications within the code that allows us to downsize our conductor without having that overcurrent protection placed right there. And we're going to discuss two of those today. Uh, we'll discuss three actually. There is a situation where you know if the uh, conductor is still protected by the breaker even though I've downsized then that's okay. Uh, but we're mostly gonna discuss this, this situation like this, right? So we're gonna discuss two situations. One of them being uh, this one right here, where it is up to three meters, right? So here, our tap, we're gonna call it a tap conductor where I'm going from a larger conductor in the main to a smaller conductor here is uh, up to and including three meters. The next situation is this one where it's over three meters uh, up to 7.5 meters. So in this example, we're going to do five, but it could be anywhere from 3.01 meters to 7.5 meters, right? And that's the measurement from the lug to the termination point here. So we're going to discuss the two of those. Um, so first of all, we're going to put some numbers into our main serve. Okay. So, We've now determined that it's going to be a 400 amp uh, main service coming in or a 400 amp disconnect, 400 amp distribution, right? So from here, I can supply 400 amps worth of load. Another thing that's going to be important here is we are talking 75 degree termination temperatures on all of our equipment or the lowest termination temperature on the equipment. Um, and then we're going to be using copper conductors. And we'll just say that all of these conduits here are all EMT conduits electrical metallic tubing. Uh, and again, see below in the description where I'll list all the tables and rules that we are referencing for all these different steps. Uh, so here we've determined 400 amp main service. Okay. So with a 400 amp main service, that would mean that this conductor here and this conductor here would need to be a 600 KC mill conductor. Now a 600 KC mill conductor is good for 420 amps. And that's based off of the 75 degree termination temperatures, not less than three conductors in a conduit. Uh, so in this case, we are referencing them based off of table two. Okay, so I've got a 600 KC mill running in. I've got a 600 KC mill running out, hitting the lugs inside this splitter. Now, I want to discuss this tap right here which is our tap that is less than three meters. So from the splitter to my control device, it's less than three meters. If you're wanting to talk about a tap that is more than three meters, up to 7.5 meters, you can jump ahead to this point in the video and that's where we'll discuss that. So 
We're gonna jump in into the code book now. We're looking at a tap that is less than three meters. So less than, uh, okay, sorry, let's not say less than. Let's call it up to, let's call it three meters or less. So we're talking about a tap now that is three meters or less. So there's two requirements that we have to meet. Now the two requirements are, it has to be not less than the load that it supplies. This conductor has to be not less than the load that it supplies. And it can be not less than the rating of the control device or a panel board, circuit board, anything like that. So in this case, we're using circuit breakers as our control device. So we have to be, a, when we're sizing this conductor, it cannot be less than the load, which makes sense to me. And it also cannot be less than the rating of that control device. So when we're doing these calculations, I always like to start at the load and work my way backwards. So we're gonna do the same load for both, but let's say we have this 60 amp load. No problem at all. When I have a 60 amp load, based upon my termination and my uh, conductor type, in this case, this conductor here would end up being a number six AUG conductor, which is good for 65 amps. That would be the minimum allowable size of conductor. Now, based on that, we're gonna head to the table uh, and we're gonna visit another rule and that would help us determine the size of this overcurrent device. Now, the overcurrent device that we would end up with in this situation, the maximum allowable overcurrent device by code, right? We're talking the maximum allowable. You could go smaller, but the maximum one that we would get would be a 70 amp overcurrent device. So a 70 amp breaker in this case, we would be able to install. Awesome. So now we need to do a comparison. We need to compare the load, right? Versus the control. That's what we need to compare. And we need our conductor that we're sizing to be good for both of those. So we're gonna take the larger of the two. So in this case, we have a 60 amp load and we have a 70 amp control device, okay? Our conductor needs to be good for both. So I'm gonna take the larger 70 amps and I'm gonna size my conductor based off of that. So based off of 70 amps, I would size my conductor at a number four, AWG, which in this case is good for 85 amps. So this conductor right here, or my tap conductor, would be a number four, A, W, G, good for 85 amps. So that's how I would go about sizing my conductor, my tap conductor, right? Reducing from a larger to a smaller if my tap is three meters or less. In a second here, we're gonna get rid of all this and we're gonna work on the uh, greater than three meters up to 7.5 meters. All right, now we are on to size this tap conductor again. If it was greater than three meters and less than seven or up to 7.5 meters, right? So 3.01 up to and including 7.5 meters. Now, in this case, we're going to progress a little bit in the code book. And again, they're thinking there's a little bit more room for danger here, right? So we read into our code book and there's the three requirements, right? 7.5 meters down to three meters. It can only be up to, or it has to be a size for at least one third of the feeder conductor ampacity or the larger conductor ampacity. And it has to be big enough for the control device. So we'll call this uh, over three, three meters up to 7.5 meters. All right, so the requirements that we have here, it has to be uh, at least one third of the feeder ampacity or the larger conductor that supplies it. And it has to be big enough for the control device. So again, we're doing a little bit of a comparison. So in this case, uh, we're dealing with a 60 amp load again, just to keep things simple. 
So we know that means here we have a number six and that gives us a 70 amp OC. So that's the simple part. We know our control device is 70 amps. Now, this is the tricky one, the one third of the feeder or the supply conductor. So in this case, our feeder or our supply conductor, our larger conductor is this 600 KC mil. And that 600 KC mil was good for 420 amps. So what we do, we take that 420 amps divided by three. And that is gonna give us in this case, a number of 140 amps. Now, pretty simple comparison, our tap conductor, right? Our smaller conductor here needs to meet both of these requirements. So I'm gonna take the larger of the two, which means my tap needs to be sized based off of 140 amps. So I take that 140 amps, my 75 degree termination, my EMT conduit, my copper conductors, I look around and I figure out that I am actually gonna require a one aught conductor one aught aug, uh, and that is gonna be good for 150 amps. So this conductor right here is gonna be a one aught. Number one, 50 amps. Um, so now that's that situation where if I was, again, over three meters up to 7.5. Now what would happen if my conductor needed to be over seven and a half meters. Let's say, you know, there's no room on this wall anymore. I have to go up and over and down to the other side of the electrical room in order to put my fuse disconnect or my circuit breaker. Uh, in that case, unfortunately, I would have to use this size. I'd have to run 600 KC mil over there. So you're gonna do everything in your power. Obviously, you're not gonna get a 600 KC mil to terminate into a 70 amp OC or a 60 amp load. Uh, so you have to do a little bit of reworking there. Um, so thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped. Um, this is a process again that you're going to run into quite a bit as an electrician, uh, downsizing a wire. And then when do I need that overcurrent device? Where can I locate it? Um, so again, hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Check the description below for the different rules and tables that I referenced in this and, uh, make sure you subscribe and, uh, like the video. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks again.